Sky and P. Joshua Bowers, you now have the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Aaron, Minister of Education, my fellow Youth Parliament members. My name is Joshua Bowers. I am a student at the University of St. Martin. I, um, I'm also working at the St. Joseph Primary School. And today I'll be talking about Article 28, 1D, where it states that makes, make educational and vocational information and guidance available, accessible to all children. And I'll be focusing on vocational education. Um, working in a school, I see that you learn that every child has a different learning style. And some children may, may understand, they might just read something and simply understand the concept, while others don't. And they, they um, often fall into um, different ways of drugs and um, bad behavior, you know? And I think that this is bad. I think it can be avo avoided. Sorry, I think it can be avoided. And I, I also believe that there's a bias a bias um, against vocational education. I think it's this dysfunctional. Uh, first, is, is, it is destructive to our children. They should have uh, the opportunity to be trained in whatever skill their natural gifts and preferences lead them to, rather than more or less um, condemning them to um, like jobs they find later on in life as meaningless to them. You know, um, if a young person has an affinity for uh, a, hair, a hair design or one of the trades they want to learn, um, we shouldn't keep them from developing those skills. Now, secondly, I think um, it's also destructive to our society. Uh, many of the skills uh, most um, people need to, com um, to compete in the, well, St. Martin needs to compete in the 21st century. Um, you can learn through technical skills. And, um, and that falls into a, a big part of technical vocational training. I think the absence of, um, this um, um, is in our, our society, I really do. And while changing socii society, um, societal values will take time, changes um, can take place on a school or district level more um, immediately. So I have a call of action to the um, Minister of Education that she may do this. Anyways, thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you, YMP Joshua Bowers. Yeah. And we now have our advisor, Ms. Michaela Schillingford. You now have the floor. Good evening, Ms. Chairman, Clifford, members of Parliament, distinguished guests, my colleagues, radio listeners, TV viewers, and supporting staff. What is education? Education is the act or process of imparting or acquiring general knowledge, developing the powers of reasoning and judgment, and preparing oneself or others int intellectually for mature life. Scholarly into institutions, such as universities and public schools, are typically used to administer teaching. Articles 28 and 29 states respectively. Article 28. State parties recognize the rights of the child to educate and with a viewing to achieving this right progressively and on the basis of equal opportunity, they shall in particular make primary education compulsory and available and free to all. Encourage a development to differ forms of edu secondary education, including general and vocational education. Make them available and accessible to every child and to appropriately measure, measure such. Two, state parties shall take all appropriate measures to ensure that schools discipline and administer in a manner consistent with a child's human dignity and in conformity with the pre present convention. Three, state parties shall promote and encourage international cooperation in matters relating to education in particular with a view of contributing to the elimination of ignorance and illiteracy throughout the world and facilitating access to scientific and technical knowledge and modern teaching methods. Article 29, state parties agree that the education of a child should be directed to the development of child's personality, talents, mental and physical abilities in their fullest potential. The development of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms, and for the principles ensured in Charter of United Nations. 
the development of rights of the child parents, his or her own cultural identity, language and values for the national views of the country. Two, no part of Article 29 or 28 shall be constructed so as to interfere with the liberty of individual and bodies to establish a direct educational institutions, subject always to observance of the principles set forth in paragraph one of the present article and in the requirements that education given in such institutions shall conform to such minimum standards as may be laid down by the state. Education is a fundamental human right and essentials for the exercise of all human rights to promote individual freedom and empowerment and yields important development benefits. Yet millions of children and adults remain deprived of education opportunities, many as a result of poverty. Education is a powerful tool by which economically and socially marginalized adults and children can lift themselves out of poverty and participate fully as citizens. We all want the best for our children, but what does that mean? Isn't it enough for children to be loving, have loving caregivers as well? Yes, children need loving, kind adults to begin to learn and grow, and children need to be cared for in a safe, stimulating space. Also, the adults who care for children must have education, training, and support. They need to learn the best way to teach their child. When children are cared for by loving, well-trained adults in a safe and stimulating location, those children are on their way to getting what they deserve, the best early childhood experience. Therefore, it is essential to start free education at superior levels to ensure this vicious cycle of giving our children poor quality education. As a result, they grow up to give the same form of education to their children because that is what they know it needs to be terminated as well. Rudolf Steiner spoke on a number of occasions about the experiences that, is, that are essential for the healthy development of young children. These include love and warmth, an environment that nourishes the senses, creative and artistic experiences, meaningful adult activity to be imitated, free imaginative play, protection of the forces of children, gratitude, reverence, and wonder, joy, humor, and happiness, adult caregivers pursuing a path of inner development. In a formal education system, the ability to grasp concepts and learn topics in vicious situations is determined through the use of exams. Degrees such as bachelor degrees, master's degrees, and PhDs are a means of evaluating the extent of formal education in a particular subject. Whether formal or informal, education is beneficial in developing the ability to think critically and make sound judgments. An educated person is also more likely to enjoy a higher standard of living and quality of life than a person with minimal education. Education has played an important role in developing a modern society explains psychology today. Through education, people gain knowledge and skills, enabling them to become productive members of society. Formal education usually starts at a preschool level and continues until college. The distinction between formal and informal education is that the form of ed education is mandated through institutions. The latter is education acquired through individual effort and personal experience. The Convention, the convention of the Rights of a Child is legally binded human rights treaty that obligates governments to guarantee special protection for the full range of human rights for children and young people under the age of 18. This year marks 27 years of the Rights of the Child Convention, which, is, which was adopted and opened for signature, ratification, and accession by the General Assembly on the 20th of November, 1989. It was entered into, forth, into force on the 2nd of November, 1919, in accordance with Article 49. UNICEF has done an exceptional job in fulfilling their duties, enforcing the convention throughout the world. Now it's our, our turn to stand with them and make sure our children are properly educated. 
Time for us to strive for excellence. Motivate our children and allow them the opportunity to free education with a high caliber, with a degree that will take them places, a degree that will allow them to further their studies at a university or college level. Defined in broad terms, educational goals are statements that describe the competence, skills, and attributes that, stu that students should possess upon completion of the course or program. They often operate within interacting domains of knowledge, skills, and attitude. Academic units may design to define educational goals, focusing on anticipated benefits to students from particip participation in a group. For example, units may design, define a goal by stating what skills, attributes, competencies, and or qualities are expected from students upon completion of a program such as research skills, communication skills, critical thinking, and creative writing. YB yet said, education is not fully a pill, is not filling of a pill, but lighting of a fire. Educational goals for our children should be lifelong learners. They should be passionate, be ready to take risks, be able to problem solve and think critically, be able to look at things differently, be able to work independently and with others, have integrity and self-respect, have moral courage, be able to use the world around them well, be, be creative, care and want to give back, be able to speak well, write well, read well, and work well with a number of people in their society. Our children should truly enjoy the life and their work. Our children are our future. Educate them right, and they definitely will be right. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Makeda Schillingford. I will now read a speech from YMP Jimla Holloman, who could not make it this evening. Educating the mind without education, the heart, without educating the heart is no education at all. Aristotle. Within our St. Martin society and culture, there are several beliefs. Some may be looked at as being through truth, while others not so much. There is a belief that education is a, necess is a necess necessity for the youth and should be instilled in them from an early age, especially for the shaping of our future as a nation. This is true. We believe that all children should go to school to get an education. This is also true. Some decide to merge these two thoughts and conclude that education starts and ends at school. This little mashup, however, is a fallacy. It's dead wrong. Education begins in the home, where our teachers are not referred as Miss or Mr., your Frau or Minier, or but as Mommy and Daddy. In our traditional ways of life, parents begin, began instructing their children from birth. They taught us right from wrong, how to groom ourselves properly, wash your hands, brush your teeth, take care of your clothes, clean your nose, tie your shoes. We were taught at home to respect our elders, to share and care for others. Our parents even began the process of book learning by teaching us our ABCs and 123s and to spell and write our names. The family. In the Caribbean culture, the family has always been viewed as the first social institution of a child. We are now seemingly diverted from this way of life and it, it, its effects are not positive ones. The family initiates the molding and shaping of a child into what he or she will continue to grow to be and prepares their minds and prepares their minds and not forgetting hearts by shaping their character. The shaping process begins. Values are learned, morals, standards, the way of life, traditions, etc., are passed on from one generation to the next. In this way, children are prepared both mentally and emotionally for what is to come. Article 29 of the United Nations Convention of the Rights of the Child focuses and takes a closer look at the goals of education. Education should, one, develop each child's personality, talents, and abilities to their to the fullest. Two, encourage children to respect others, human rights, and their own and other cultures. Three, 
also help them to learn to learn to live peacefully, protect the environment, and respect other people. Four, children have a particular responsibility to respect the rights rights their parents and education should aim to develop respect for the values and culture of their parents. Can all of these be learned at school or learn or do they have to first be learned at home? It is my firm belief that not only should see not only should these values be first learned at home, but as the child pursues formal education, ohana as the Hawaiians would say, the family unit is a paramount in ensuring that those values are modeled and reinforced for the child. Chemist and Nobel Prize winner for his great works in chemistry, William Standish Knowles, also believes this, and I quote, My family gave me the best education. Social institutions are said to be the building blocks of society. In our St. Martin culture, we grew up learning different norms and develop different skills that would help us along the way through our parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles at home. The learning of the norms and values and skills do not stop here, but continue throughout an entire life through other social institutions. Although they fall under the same category and are interrelated, each is different, adding another dimension to our overall growth and development. These social institutions are the school and the church. The school as an institution, as a social institution, can be said to have the largest impact on the youth of St. Martin. This is so because it educates us. It is concerned with socializing members of society into norms, values, knowledge, and skills a society deems important. The main function of education is to teach us academic, vocational, and even social skills needed within the society. Hence, its importance. While both the Convention and our Constitution guarantee every child's right to an education, the quality and effectiveness of that education lies in the understanding that in order to meet our goals, it will take the entire village working as a cohesive unit, family, school, church, and community. Youth of St. Martin, education is not just the responsibility of family, school, church, and state. The most important plan of our education is us. We have a right to an education mandated by the Convention of the Rights of the Child, enshrined in the Constitution of St. Martin, and enforced through the law on, comp on compulsory education. But most importantly, we have a duty and a responsibility not to allow the opportunities before us to be wasted. Take your education seriously. Stop cutting classes, pay attention in school, Act like a sponge and soak up all the knowledge you can. If you do not understand, ask for help. Read, read, and read some more. Always try your best. What we have may not be perfect, but we do have an opportunity to learn, which gave us an opportunity to improve the system. And this was from YMP Jimla Holloman. I would like to thank all the youth members of Parliament for this speech. Would any member of the youth parliament or any member of the Youth Territorial Council would like to make any additional statements. Okay, we will have no additional statements. And at this moment, we will have our final remarks from our Minister of Education, Cult, youth, Culture, Youth, and Sports, Ms. Honorable Silveria Jacobs. Good afternoon to you, Madam President, the Fifir, and all the Youth Parliament and Territorial Council members of St. Martin. It's wonderful to have you here. I'm disappointed I didn't get to hear the Territorial members, but I understand the next time, hopefully, we'll be able to organize maybe a nice little debate between the two. It's a wonderful opportunity in celebrating the rights of children to have young people some of you children, some of you young adults, seated here discussing a very, very important topic. Educate me right so that my future is bright. And some of you brought up some very interesting points, some very hard-hitting points for the Ministry of Education and this minister. So I was like, wow, this is why they invited me, huh? <laughs> but um, if I'd known, I could have come with my staff and we could have actually attempted to answer some of these questions right away and have a really good, real 
parliamentary debate as it is done usually. So I think we can aim for that in days to come and not necessarily wait on the, the week of November or the month from November into December when we celebrate you. Um, what I find very interesting for those who may not have been there at the opening of the Rights of the Child ceremonies at the Hotel de la Collectivité, there were presentations done by some very small children and the awareness that they have of what their rights are, but not just their rights, their responsibilities, was very, very enlightening. And that they could highlight and show pictures and, and give dialogue about students in faraway countries who um, don't have not even half of the rights which we scorn here. Yes, as President just said on behalf of um, Jamil, I believe, Holloman, it's not perfect, but we are a work in progress. And it is by your contributions that we can improve on this system. What I can say for uh, the southern side of St. Martin, I can only speak for that side, unfortunately, in the sense of that we are striving towards doing more. Um, parental involvement, you've heard of education on the move, getting the community as well as parents more involved in education and seeing that they can have an input regardless of their level of education. Um, and in so doing, actually educate themselves. We've also taken very big strides in getting St. Martin listed as a learning city at a global network of learning cities internationally, the only one in the kingdom. None of the other kingdom partners have so far registered. But this gives us opportunity for free online courses, for them to send professionals to help us to upgrade whichever area we feel need upgrading. We just have to be able to identify such. And I think as being related to the various kingdom governments that we have on both sides, when we talk to even within the Caribbean region, they see us as the lucky ones. In some areas, we are envious of their independence. We are envious of other aspects in their development. And there are areas where we do need to improve here. But when you travel out and you see and you learn and you experience, you see that we are truly blessed here on St. Martin. We do have beyond the compulsory education for elementary. We have compulsory education up till 18 years old. And I don't believe, as one of the YMP said, that we are meeting the need. I believe it was YMP George. We are not meeting the needs. We have students who are quote unquote graduating without a real end term that can enter them into either college or the workplace properly prepared. Um, many students are demotivated, but when you do an analysis of it, it surely has a lot to do with our social economic development and the lack of um, services on all areas, as well as the lack of involvement or know-how of parents. So that's why with Education on the Move, we are not only aiming at making sure that you, the students, appreciate the little education that we are offering you, we are striving towards getting more technology in education. We know how the technological natives of the past 20, 30 years strive and cry to be able to, you know, use these things in school as well as all other technological um, handheld devices and having those things available. And so these are things that we are striving for as a government. I know I cannot answer all your questions. I didn't actually take notes, but just in trying to recollect some of the things you've been saying, we are striving to reach that goal. And with your continued vigilance and questioning and also making the suggestions that you do, we can make sure it meets your needs. What I would like to encourage you to do is to continue to reach your peers. What um, I believe Jamila's speech highlighted was that the responsibility of our youth to make good use of what we have. Sometimes when I'm sitting in office and I receive um, advices of students who have not submitted their grades, they have received study financing, but they have not lived up to their responsibility to send in their grades in order to be able to maintain that financial assistance. And then parents and whomever else get upset with the department, the workers, or ultimately the minister. And I think as a society, we have to grow up. I'm saying it frankly here. 
and I hope to be able to say it even more frankly to the general population, but as this is being broadcast, I hope all within the reach of my voice will understand that rules and regulations are there. If they need to be changed, then propose changes, then send in um, written requests to your representatives to look at amending whatever rule or regulation there is. But all of them that are there now have been put in there because of some reason. And sometimes a few spoil it for the others and put a lot of strict guidelines in place. And we are very much challenged with having enough funds to send away all our students. So the suggestion that we also expand our base here on St. Martin and offer more opportunities for students to stay here and study here and be close to family is also another important one which we are seeking to do. All these things take time. I hope you give us the time to be able to do that. Hopefully by the time you graduate, you have more options. And I do know that, for instance, uh, our Minister of Finance, who's also a lawyer, has been working diligently for us to get the law courses offered here. Again, it has been done. So a lot of adults have, while working, also taken the law courses and become lawyers over time. So you're never too old to learn. Do not think that only in your youth you can learn. Each and every one of us must see opportunities, especially in this technological age, to continuously learn. And that's why we would like to see St. Martin be seen as a learning city, as a city where, regardless of your age, regardless of your financial position at any given time, the opportunities are there for you to strive and learn. But of course, for us to have a bright future for you, you must take advantage of the few opportunities we have and continue to knock on this minister's door, on your teacher's doors, on your parents' doors, on your school's doors to make sure they meet those needs with the resources they have. And maybe creatively, we can come up with ways to stretch the little and make it much. Congratulations to you on your presentations and may you continue to be icons, examples, role models. It's a very tough job. Sometimes you're not going to feel like being it and want to be under scrutiny. But once you are in the limelight, they are watching what you do. So by just being that great example, you may be the source of encouragement and inspiration to one of your peers. And one by one, we can all make a difference. Thank you, Youth Parliament, and much success as we continue to strive and to the Youth Council as well as you continue to work with our youth and get them to where they need to be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister of Education, Ms. Silvera Jacobs. And ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of this meeting. I would like to thank the President of Parliament, Honorable Sarah Westcott William, and the staff of Parliament for permitting us to hold our public meeting here today. A special thanks go to our parents, friends, the Youth Territorial Council, and our Minister of Education for joining us today. Thank you for, to the media for your coverage of this meeting, and thank you, Youth Members of Parliament, for your inspiring words to the public. I hereby leave you with this quote. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your participation. I hereby close this meeting.